Visa is an almost perfect stock that you need to consider for your portfolio. Today, the spotlight is on this company. We're going to analyze it as always. We'll look at the historical performance. We'll take a look at their top line revenue growth year on year, as well as their bottom line net income. We're going to take a look at the health of the company, their total cash versus their total debt. And we'll see how they're performing versus others in the industry and over the last few years. We also want to take a look and understand the insider selling that we have noted over the last year, as well as the institutional ownership, whether or not they are buying more shares or they're selling. And as always, not just the dividend safety, but we will look at the financial metrics, the three cash flows, the net debt to EBITDA levels, and a few more other important metrics to understand about this company. And we're going to talk forward looking at the guidance that has been set over the next quarter, as well as the next full year. As always, we are going to run this company through the valuation model. We want to get to our intrinsic value as well as our acceptable buy price, given our investor margin of safety. And we'll look towards Wall Street to see what they are forecasting over the next 12 months. So straight away, when we look at the historical performance of this company, they are up 22 percent over the last year, a very strong performance over the last five years, up 76 percent. And when we expand to the last 10 years, very solid performance for any portfolio up 465 percent. Bear in mind, whilst they don't have the largest dividend of 0.75%, these results don't include reinvesting those dividends. We note they are towards the upper end of the 52-week range with a forward PE below 28. And we can see both Seeking Alpha analysts as well as Wall Street analysts consider this a buy now. So let's take a deep dive, understand why this is almost the perfect stock to have in any portfolio and take it from there. Now, top line revenue, we want to see a minimum of 3 to 7% growth year on year. What we can in actual fact note is nearly three times growth over the last 10 years from 12.7 billion all the way to 33 billion. Now, when we take a look at it in a graph, we can see quite a nice trend. It is increasing nearly every single year, moving in the right direction. So this is a company that does continue to increase their top line. And surely we will take a look at it in the percentage format. Now, Bottom line, the story to be told here, more than three times their top line, and in fact, three times top line, three times their bottom line, 5 billion down to 17.3 billion. And again, a very similar story. Not only are they increasing their top line revenue, but they are also increasing their bottom line net income. So that is very strong for this company. When we look at the health of this company, which is typically when we analyze their total cash versus their total debt, we can see their cash position has increased from 4 billion in 2014 to their latest quarterly report at around 19 billion. And again, their cash is also a position on their balance sheet that does tend to increase over the longer term. Now, when we compare their 19 billion of cash to their total debt, we look both numerically and directionally at this balance. In fact, they had no debt in 2014, and we can see their latest quarterly report showing around 21 billion. So their total cash and their total debt position aren't too far off each other, but we do also note their total debt does seem to be very inconsistent year on year, where we did see their cash increasing over the longer term. Now, when we compare these to others in the industry, now this is the transaction and payment processing industry, we have MasterCard, a very well-known competitor, Fiserv, PayPal, and a few others that we have in fact considered and reviewed on the channel. Over the last 12 months, so this does include those dividends reinvested, Visa is up 23%, one of the better performing from their competitors, although we do note MasterCard did have a better performance over the 12-month period. When we expand this to over the last five years, again, we do see Visa in the top three, although we do know MasterCard did in fact outperform it. When we look over the last 10 year period, what we find out is that Visa was also in that top three with a 506% return, very strong performance over the period, although we also know in fact MasterCard did outperform it 586%. Now, looking at the metrics, we're looking at the growth metrics. They did get a valuation grade or in fact growth grade of B. What we can see revenue year on year growth, 10.48% above the sector medium of 5.56%. Forward looking growth, 10.5% again above the sector median. A lot of growth across the board. That extends to the EBITDA as well as their EPS growth as well. So overall, they are growing, in fact, double digits as we can see in the majority of metrics. So that is very strong getting overall B grade. 
when we move this to the profitability they in fact get an a plus we're going to take a look at this in more detail but just take a look at this gross profit margin 98 percent with the sector median coming in at 59 their EBIT margin, again, very strong, 67% versus the sector median coming a lot low at 22.65. And these very, very exemplary metrics do come down all the way to pretty much every single one. So a lot of positives to note with Visa on their underlining business itself. Now, when we take a look at insider ownership, when well, it comes to 0.19%, we see around 86.21 million worth of sales by the ins in insiders. And we can see quite a lot over the last year. When we take a look at who these are, we can in fact see the CEO himself did sell at the beginning of April. So literally a week ago, over 8,000 shares for a total of $2.3 million. And we can in fact see he did sell at the beginning of February as well for a very similar amount. So we are seeing quite a number of insiders selling here. Now it isn't necessarily bearish because we don't know why they sell, whether that's for personal or financial reasons. What we try to do is identify insider buying as that is more of a bullish signal. But again, as always, we are transparent. You can see the information yourself. Now, when we move that to institutional ownership, we see 82%. And in fact, we see a fair number of sales over the period, although we see a lot more buying. And in fact, the majority of this did come in quarter two. When we look at Q4 of 2023, we see nearly double the amount of buys than we have sales. And in terms of Q1, we do in fact see a larger number of sales than we do see buying. So in the latest quarter in Q1, there are more sales by institutions than buys. But over the last 12 months, as we can clearly see, a lot more buying than selling. Now, just to let you know, we have released our latest free weekly article. If you do want to gain access to this completely free, do click on that pinned comment below. Latest article, we do discuss 10 undervalued dividend stocks, which we have a double sign of undervaluation, both on dividend yield theory, as well as looking at the forward P. And you do get access to all of these other articles, all completely free. Now, what we want to have a quick look at is the forward guidance for the second quarter, as well as the full year for 2024. So in terms of revenue growth, they are expecting for next quarter, upper mid to high single digit for the full year, low double digit growth, which is very nice to know. In terms of their expense growth, they are expecting low double digit on both the next quarter as well as the full year. And in terms of their earnings per share growth, high teens for the next quarter. So very positive expectation in terms of the full year still, even the low teens looking very, very healthy. So this is a company that they still expect over the next quarter and over the next full year to continue grow at double digit as we're about to take a look now. So dividend safety score of 99, very safe, the highest score obtainable, 557 billion market cap. So it is a mega cap company. Now, the last recession, this is for those who do see a recession inbound soon. They, in fact, increased the dividend during the 07, 09 crash. They had plus 9.5% sales, which was well above the average growth that came in at around negative 12%. Dividend growth, very nice to see, not just the fact that we see double digit increases, but the consistency over the last five years, as well as the last 10 years, a very strong dividend growth company. And they have been increasing those dividends for the last 15 years. Now, in terms of dividend yield theory, for those that are new, it does state that a company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five year average. So we have our first sign of undervaluation here. In fact, we have another sign now with the forward P sitting below the five year average. Although we do note that the financial sector P is much lower. Do bear in mind, we're not looking at any of these models in isolation and we will conclude towards the end. So free cash flow payout ratio, as always, below 60%, the blanket rule. Earnings data, it is susceptible to manipulation through management accounting. But again, do take a look if you do prefer it. What we do know over the last 10 years, it's been below 30% every single year, 19 in 2022, 19 in 2023, in fact, and 21% expected in 2024. So no worries whatsoever with that dividend. And we can start to understand and see how they are able to offer those double digit increases. On top of that, free cash flow, whilst not very consistent, is increasing over the longer term. 2024 expected to go even higher as well. So free cash flow growth with this company is not slowing down. Sales growth, as we mentioned earlier, 3 to 7% at a bare minimum. What we in fact notice is over the longer term, nearly double digit every single year. More recent year at 11%, very strong and attractive to those potential investors. And we can justify 2020 due to that COVID year. 
terms of numericals, well, just another format from what we saw earlier. What's also great about this company is the way they do share buybacks. They do quite a large number as we can see and consistently year on year. Again, returning that excess cash to shareholder pockets as you do gain a larger portion of the company. In terms of the ROIC, well, we look for around 10% or more. What we can see, very, very strong year on year, pretty consistently around the 20 to 30% level. Again, this shows us, gives us faith as well that Mandarin are able to effectively allocate their capital. These are probably one of the best margins you will see. Now, yes, we only want to see around 12% or more for the majority of companies. Now, with Visa, we can see in the mid-60s consistently year on year. That is a very strong feat, not something we typically see with companies. And on the free cash flow margin as well, very, very strong. You'd have to go and dig into these videos to really see other companies that come anywhere near this. The last three years in the low 60s as well, absolutely phenomenal. It is a free cash flow machine. On top of that, the net debt to EBITDA, the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization, these numbers essentially show us the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. Look, we want to see below three for the majority. For Visa, in 2023, 0.05, 2024 expected 0.08, essentially showing us it wouldn't take them many days to pay off all of that debt net of their cash on hand. So they have a very strong balance sheet and that dividend does remain to be secure. And by the looks of it, they should have no worries again increasing that dividend by double digits. So let's jump into the valuation. And as always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. So jumping into the first model, now we have the multiples valuation model. Really, the only company that is very similar is MasterCard. So we have used that. We use their P multiple to get to Visa. And in terms of Visa's earning per share, we multiply it by that 40.25. And we can see here an undervaluation signal with the market value around 277. But do bear in mind, we don't look at any of these models in isolation. Now, Dividend discount, we can see here very strong growth over the period. In fact, on average at 15.88%. We have gone forward looking at 7.25. This gives us an intrinsic value again, showing room for an undervaluation at 297.44. We then move on to the DCF model, the free cash flow year on year. Average growth rate at 16.6%. .6%. We have gone a lot more conservative. 8% lower than the previous year increase of 10%, as well as lower than management estimate and analyst targets. In conjunction with the discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flow and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract that total debt, get to the equity value, divide by the shares outstanding, and we get to that intrinsic value. So we have three undervaluation signals in today's episode, with the intrinsic value here being the average of these three models, coming to $331. Now, bear in mind, you can grab a copy of this valuation model to get to the intrinsic value as well as the acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio or those on your watch list by clicking on the pinned comment below. So the way it works is we use a margin of safety of 10% and we execute on that if we believe it meets three criteria, a wide moat, strong financial metrics and good forward looking data. So we keep going to this near the current trading price and we can see at 15% MOS level, it looks to be a buy around 282. At 20%, it isn't quite there yet. So we see between a 15 to 20% MOS for Visa on today's price. And we did see as well earlier that based on dividend yield theory, it does look to be undervalued. In terms of Wall Street, well, they see around 12% upside for this company. Their price target is $309 that they expected to hit over the next 12 months. But as always, do let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As we ran through, this is a company with some phenomenal metrics. They have a very strong balance sheet. Their margins are incredibly high. They're still growing their top line by double digits. They're increasing their dividends consistently at double digits as well. There is a lot to like. The only point for me that comes down to this is that margin of safety. It really does depend on what level you want and what you believe to be the price moving forwards and if you see any massive risks disrupting the likes of Visa and MasterCard. For those who are interested at a 25% margin of safety, it would be a buy at 248 and at 30% at around 232. But as we mentioned on today's episode, we can see it has between a 15 to 20% level. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's episode, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are notified of when we do drop these videos. As always, let us know your thoughts. Catch you all in the next one. And for now, take care.